welcome to another tutorial with me my name is crafty jojo and today i want to show you how i make these little decorations uh, it's slightly difficult to show you it's like a bauble and it has some charms dangling from underneath and um, they are great for christmas but they're also great for um, tree decorations like when you're having a barbecue um, in summer you can hang them in the trees they are really pretty and they're so easy to make and I'm going to show you how. So I'm going to put these two bits away. This one is not doing what I want. So I'm going to put these away. I hope you like them and they are very easy to make. So, um, and by the way, of course, it's not my invention. Countless other people have made these before me. So I'm not claiming any credits for the technique. It's just my own make, my own design with the um, paper I choose and how much I actually squeeze them together because I'm going to show you that you can create countless variations of this very easily so I have to put this on the floor and today I want to use I want to do a bit of like an oriental style so I'm I decided to take some of the Eastern Palace designer paper and you need two uh, sheets measuring 12 by 12 inches and all you do is you have to score them in half so you score them at six inches And you're going to fold the sheet in half so this is the first bit and this is the second bit so here we go we can put this away we want to crease this really well because the next thing we need to do is we need to cut our strips and i'm not so sure if i want to use this side because i just thought maybe this looks better together than this yes i'm going for the brown side actually <clears throat> so depending on what type of designer paper you team up for this project um, you can uh, create like if you would take floral um, paper like bliss and uh, blooms or blooms and bliss or whatever the pack is called um, it will give you a totally different impression of the item or of the finished bauble um, if it's more like Christmassy or just more like um, a room decoration for spring or summer so this is what you do once you folded them uh, in half you need to cut them in strips and the strips are one inch wide so i'm going to do um, a lot of cutting now this is what you do you cut um, strips like so the whole paper and i will do this uh, off camera and come back to you so this is what you get you have two packs of strips and they need to be glued together in the center so um, I don't think I really need to explain to you how to glue this, but I'm just quickly going to do the last two because I tried to save some time. So you just add some glue and fold it up again and that's it. So then you got your strips ready. And you need six of each color for one bauble. So one that one feels so thick two three four five six and from this pack we do the same one two three four five six to here and six to there so you um, arrange them in alternating colors like so double check give them a rub again and where's the green one between these there it is so here we go there's the green brown green brown okay so the next thing you need to do um this is enough to do one bobble you take your tool um your handheld punch this is the one eighth of an inch handheld punch and um, i usually take two strips lay it on top of each other and i'm going to put a hole so that's the distance you have to eyeball it I'm actually using um, my punch because here where the bend starts you can see there is a slight bend in the metal and I push the paper all the way to that bend roughly and then that will give me the same distance to that side 
and I just have to focus on the center of the paper. So you are going to punch the holes. Oh, come on. Well, never mind. You can do three as well, though, then my order of the color, alternating color, is being disturbed because I just pop it back on the pile. Like so. And like so. It's important that the holes sit more or less on the same height, otherwise you will have a few strips being slightly longer when they bend inwards when you are pulling on your string later on. So try to um, really get them eyeballed. So the next thing you need now is some twine or in my case because I don't want to use the twine because uh, the twine is so soft it's difficult to feed through the hole. So what I'm using is um, this stuff and this is like a little wire you get it from um for for jewel from for it, it's um for for jewelry making you know uh, what is it called i just always like the words so you just cut a piece like so it is a metal it's on it's available uh, on aliexpress uh, and apparently in crafting uh, shops like probably hobbycraft will have it as well but i'm not willing to pay like five quid for a spool of uh, cheap wire um, that you can get for like 79p from china because they buy it from china too so that's where i go as well so the next thing uh, you need to do is if you are not using this and you are using um twine you would tie a notch to one end now so that uh, the bead that you are going to feed on your twine next is not going to slip through because that is apparently going to be the sits underneath so you can add more beads if you like if you want to dangle a little charm like i have done like these little guardian angels you would need to knot a loop and then so that you can hook something into that loop and then on top of that knot feed all your beads and i'm going to do it slightly different so what i'm using is um these crimps so I'm going to get myself a metal crimp out. Oh my god, I need to go to the opticians again. My eyes are so bad, I can't see what I'm doing. And I'm going to make a loop, because I want to dangle something underneath, maybe a tassel or something. You don't have to um, put that, whatever you want to put in there, on there straight away. So I'm just going to quickly create my loop here which is tricky if you can't see what you're doing when you're blind like a mole, like I am. Trying to fold this in half to make it. That has worked. So, this, can you see it? Too close. This is my tiny little loop and I'm going to feed beads on it. So I'm going to set this away and um, Oh, my color theme is more or less green and blue so I'm going to I like there's also brown in it isn't it so I like this because that is blue and brown so I had to feed um, not only my two beads on this I also had to dangle something underneath uh, which is not a color match now but I haven't got any uh, green or blue um, angel left so I just took this because the hole in my bead is so big it would fall through so I had to use my guardian angel here as a working as a stopper for me so the next thing you do is once you have got all your beads on your thread you are going to take your pile and you bend it you pre-bend it and then you're going to feed these are the ends where it's full so this is going to be my top and the ends with the seams I want them to be at the bottom because they are not the not so they are the not so nice parts so I'm going to use my thread here my 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 metal string and just feed it through all the holes at the bottom 
if only it would work here you go so this is what you have at this point so you have your dangle you have your pearls and you have all your paper with the seam at the bottom now it is important when you place it in front of you now i bend it in the wrong direction never mind i'll just bend it over like this when you place it in front of you to um, feed the rest on the other end you must make sure that the pearls are at the top whilst uh, the loose end is at the bottom and you pay, place the paper in front of you like so and you pick the first bit and you start a feeding from underneath so you always take the next one and you come through the hole from underneath and you start fanning them up already and the further you progress the more difficult it gets because you need to keep pushing these down a bit so they start fanning up so make sure that this pile doesn't twist and all of a sudden you are feeding from the top through the bottom that's wrong then you need to keep it lying like this and feed from underneath through to the top and you do this 12 times so it's getting trickier with every bit you add keep fanning them up so by pushing down you fan them up and you keep going from bottom to the top and keep fanning them up and it's now going to start to twist as well so these ones will start twisting because of course it's going to cause a spiral movement fanning these things up which is absolutely fine So you take the bottom to the top and the last three, okay. So this is what you have and you want to layer them and then when you start carefully pushing you have to untangle inside as well this one isn't right look and this one i have fed wrong wrongly through it so i have to undo my whole pile again because this one has twisted so um i have to take all these out pop it back on this is the side and this had twisted the little bastard so I'm going to have to redo it and well, this is going to happen to you as well because as soon as it starts fanning up down there this paper pile wants to twist and it does as you saw it just did on me and I didn't notice until I tried to pull my papers down and then it don't fan up nicely so you have to investigate and then kick the one out who does that to you so hopefully this is right now otherwise i have to redo the whole this is right now so if you pull they will fall in place like so and this is already looking pretty and this is what i meant depending on how hard you pull you can actually give this a more oval shape like if you loosen this up but i personally i don't like it it looks like a bit like a seashell you know like but i don't like that this is open at the inside then so i actually prefer to pull down and then um have it more like a ufo kind of bauble shape but it's up to you uh, depending on you see if you loosen it up and you would tie your knot up here now you would have a rotating it's not bad but I don't know for some reason this gap that will automatically occur I don't like so I keep pulling it down and then this is going to be a closed bauble so um, what's left to do is you now would not um, feed uh, if you if you don't use metal if you use um, a thread or a twine or whatever you would now make a knot feed another one or two or even three pearls or beads on it and then tie a loop so that you can hang it 
and that's it and you cut the loose end off i'm uh, still going to have to put back in um, my next metal crimp and um, make a loop and crimp it and then feed my beads on it so i'm going to do this but i'm going to do this off camera because this is fiddly um, and i don't want you to get bored with that so I have finally managed to put my crimp in place and I'm thinking because another way to decorate is you don't necessarily need to have to put pearls on top. You could also tie a nice uh, pr pretty ribbon around it that hangs down from here. Um, just get creative and I, I probably am going to finish this off with beads to just match um, the other one. So um, let me just quickly see what I've got. This is a big one which I like. I think I like this big one better than that one and this green is also all right so I'm going to feed my beads through and I'm actually going to secure them with some hot glue I just decided so um, I'm going to get my hot glue gun out no wrong way around I didn't want this first I wanted this first so um, this is another reason why I prefer the metal wire over the um, twine or some soft stuff because it will be so much more difficult to feed it through a bead unless you get a really big hole bead but then the bead is not going to work as a stopper so I'm struggling to put these on I'm going to do this off camera because I don't want to bore you with that as well and um, then I'm just going to show you how I'm going to secure it with hot glue so my hot glue is hot so I'm going to put a bit of the hot glue on my little thing and I push this down and just pop it on there hold it in place straight till it sets and then um, I can add I'm not sure um, yet how many I'm going to put on but um, maybe I'll just leave it like that. You could secure these with hot glue as well, but um, this will allow me to still change my mind later on if I leave these movable. But this one that I just glued in place will secure my um, bauble. And this is my bauble finished. And um, this is what it looks like. Uh, very difficult to see when it's filming from the top. So this is the bottom side. And I'm still going to switch this angel because um, I'm going to look for a blue one or a green one, but I only had pink one. So um, for the tutorial, this will do. But this is how it goes. And I hope you like um, this little tutorial and get um, crafty and let me see your makes and maybe somebody else finds a better solution. I was thinking of maybe gluing a pearl from inside after I put the, the bottom, uh, after I fed my... Um, metal a bit my wire through the bottom holes if I secure that from inside with hot glue and a bead maybe that would stop it from moving up inside when you don't pull it as hard so that you have more like this um, overly shape but uh, I'm, I'm going to get experimental on this because I still have to do a second one so I'm, I'm probably going to try this out and get back to you and let you know if that has worked but anyway thanks for watching this have a very nice Sunday happy crafting don't forget to subscribe to my blog as well as to my youtube channel if you don't want to miss out on my tutorials and um, yeah happy crafting and have a nice Sunday bye